Hey everyone, welcome to this latest episode of Hacker Toolbox. Today I'm going to be talking about my toolbox, which is my API hacking toolbox, um, and particularly the automation aspect of it. Now, APIs I think are a really great thing, especially if you're new to get started with hacking. Um, and especially now that I've worked on a bug bounty platform, it's also quite a lot of the time has bugs in it. Um, so I think API is a really great place to start, especially if you're, say, a bit new or you would want to find your first bug. The problem is APIs, especially on the kind of scale of, like, a bug bounty program, are huge. Like, these are not the same as doing any kind of um, lab exercise or CTF. It just, it can't compare because when you're actually looking at uh, an API, like you can have thousands of different requests that do slightly different things. So automation is really tempting, but it's also really hard. So today I'm going to talk about what automated tools I use, how I combine automated tools with my uh, existing more manual workflow. Uh, and I'm going to give you some advice on how I think you can use these tools to find API bugs yourselves. So first off, let's talk about the sponsor for this video. This video is very kindly sponsored by IP Info. I'd like to thank ipinfo.io for sponsoring this video. What is IP Info? Well, it's all in the name. IP Info provides accurate, up-to-date IP address information, including geolocation data, VPN detection, abuse contacts, and other types of data in a really fast, really clean API. They've been doing this for eight years and handle over 40 billion API requests every single month. They also provide a bunch of free features and tools that can be really super handy for getting data quickly. One of the most common use cases for me is just to check my own public IP address using something like curl or to check the details of an IP address I'm investigating by running curl IP info slash IP address. If you want to have a play around with the data yourself, I really recommend getting the IP info Golang cl client from GitHub IP info CLI and running some commands. So thank you very much for IP Info for sponsoring this video. So let's talk API hacking. Um, when we think about API hacking, this is kind of the the, the overall um, workflow we use. So we first ask ourselves, you know, what's in scope? Like what parts of the API are in scope, if anything? What parts of the website are in scope? Um, what, you know, are there anything off limits? We then look for enumeration. So enumeration is where we start to find every individual API endpoint. If you want to think about it kind of a different way, when we think about scope, we're asking the question, is there an API there? When we're talking about um, enumeration, we're saying, okay, what exactly is in that API? Now, after we've enumerated an API, we can start to make decisions, our plan of action. Um, often this leads to like API specific vulnerabilities, things like IDOs. Um, sometimes that might be interaction vulnerabilities, so cross-site scripting, where you're essentially bypassing, you know, WAF filters by uh, just going to the API instead of anything else. But that requires, as you can imagine, a bit more tuning. Like it's very much a case of using the API as an entry point rather than testing the API itself. Uh, and when we think about API-specific vulnerabilities, I'm talking about things like the API top ten. I'm talking about things like. Um, you know, IDOs, information disclosure, your traditional API security vulnerabilities that I've talked about numerous times. Now, one thing to note in this is that none of these stages can really be 100% automated. These tools are about supporting your manual testing, not replacing it. And that I think is really key because one of the great things about API hacking is that it is hard to automate. You know, the pros aren't um, aren't automating API hacking because they can't, because it's hard to automate and it's better to support manual testing methodologies where we can. And so with that, really the two parts I have my kind of API hacking automation is really in the enumeration and the testing for specific vulnerabilities. But why? Because it's annoying. So RESTful APIs are one of the most common types of APIs. They have usually got a lot of different vulnerabilities because they're quite complex and mistakes easily get made. But they are so annoying to test. Like the patience that you need to go through 
each resource and then each crud on each resource if you think about it you know you might have a hundred resources but each one of those is going to have an endpoint for create read update delete so really you have 400 urls you need to test and on top of that maybe you're looking around and saying well I want to test for like three vulnerabilities in each one of these and you can see that you just get like an explosion of um, all these different URLs that you can use. So my automation is primarily around making it less annoying to test. It's removing that aspect of like this annoys me. I do a lot of manual testing still and I do think genuinely that manual testing is one of the best ways for beginners to get started because if you think about the pros they have such well-defined methodologies they have tools and they're usually paying for tools like they're paying for additional data you don't have access to they have the money to invest in it actually looking at more manual testing can be a great way as a beginner to get into um uh like hacking in general so let's talk about attack surface. So here are my tips to better understand the attack surface of your target. And what do I mean when I say attack surface? I mean everything we can hack. If we can hack it, we want to know about it. And the problem with that is that we need to know what's in scope. So some platforms include a burp configuration file. If you import it into burp, you'll only see in scope items. However, you should always, always manually read the scope. Um, like genuinely reading through the scope, really understanding what the the uh, like the program is actually looking for and what they're not looking for means you don't waste your time. You don't waste your time on vulnerabilities they don't care about or endpoints that are out of scope. And more than that, you know, when you submit something out of scope, that can actually impact your standing with the platform. It means you might be less likely to get invites. It means that they might see you as creating more noise than creating more signal, right? It really much depends on the platform and how it works. But actually, if you go out of scope, you might be in a position where your standing is affected. And certainly, you know, customers complain, programs complain, and that can also impact you as well. So although you can have like the burp configuration file and you can do it like that, I actually really recommend um, making sure you read the out of scope manually and really take a note of domains that they say is just not uh, relevant. So you can see on this particular one that from integrity that vulnerabilities related to NIIS.org and xroad.global or any other website related to xroad is actually out of scope but only the software is in scope and so what that means for you as a as a tester is you're almost like ah you can't necessarily do um web testing the way you would approach it normally that might completely test change how you think about that so i really do recommend making sure you understand the in-scope stuff like as you're doing it so let's talk about recon um so amass is a really good tool if you've not used it before um really useful for subdomain enumeration if you're working on a large scope project i absolutely recommend using amass um if amass is maybe too complicated or you don't really see the point lazy recon is this collection of scripts made by nahamsek um i've had mixed results with it but it's a great tool to start with, especially if you're like, I don't know how to do recon. How do I do recon? Uh, there's web screenshots, which is actually included in Lazy Recon, which just takes screenshots of URLs. You give it a list of URLs and it outputs screenshots of them. Really useful for initial triage. So if you're thinking, you know, what's on that one? What's on that one? What's on that one? Is there anything interesting there? Now, Hamsek talks a lot more about his recon in his content, so I really do recommend reading his. And then he's also got... Um, this bug bounty toolkit uh bbht which includes a bunch of different tools um so really recommend that oh whoops So API specific enumeration, I recommend Kite Runner. Kite Runner is by far the best tool for RESTful APIs. I've made a video on it, if you're not sure. It always, for me, captures way more than traditional word lists. Like genuinely, Kite Runner is a fantastic tool that I would like 100% recommend for enumeration.
if you want to use a word list or you've got a word list in mind, really recommend FFUF. I've also got a video on that. Um, one of my favorite things about it is that you can repeat everything that works into burp. So that way, if you even if you don't pay for burp, you still can like get some um, example like some features from FFUF and then Axiom. So Axiom allows you to do stuff in the cloud by splitting out the processing across like different servers. Um, things like FFUF. I don't really recommend it because it's about traffic and overloading a website. Um, but there's certainly some like debate around it. But certainly if you do want to start offloading your processing, Axiom is a great way to do that. If you want to make word lists that are target specific, I really recommend Tom Nom Nom's word list method, which uses a bunch of command line tools to create uh, target specific words. He goes over it in really big detail in this Nahamcon presentation from 2020. In terms of general word lists, I really look for like nouns, verbs and actions rather than API word lists. What I tend to find with API word lists is they're actually like really specific to a piece of software or a target and they don't really generalize very well but um, nouns verbs actions always generalize super well uh, burp automation so i actually do include some um, uh, automation that i do in burp so when you test apis you'll often have like a resource and then when you look at the json you'll have like associated resources right if you have a um, api endpoint for posts you'll often see user ID or forum ID. Um, or if you maybe have author ID, or maybe if you have use a single user, you might see a role ID, you might see some other types of IDs. So what I've created here is just a simple regex script uh, that works in Intruder, which crawls through the API looking for these um, associated records. So if it sees role ID, it's going to look for both slash role and slash roles. If it's looking for a user ID, it's going to check users, etc. So I really recommend this, and this is uh, a quick uh, little tip I put up here. I'll put this in the description so you can easily copy and paste it. So GraphQL enumeration, your simple GraphQL in introspection query does a ton. Payload all the things has one. Um, if you want to know more about GraphQL, you can look at my videos for it. InQL is a really cool um, burp add-on, which essentially automatically sends the introspection query when you find a GraphQL endpoint. And you can see here that it's been automatically able to grab um, the queries and the mutations, and then all of the queries that are, that are already in there. So I really do recommend InQL. So the next thing here is moving on from recon into finding vulnerabilities. Um, and my number one piece of advice is just don't use scanners. I know this might be a bit controversial. There's no point using scanners. Like you're going to get false positives or you're going to get, if they are positives, just dupes. Like, Nucli is probably the best scanner out there at the moment, but genuinely, just do not waste your time with vulnerability scanners. If you found it, you are not the first person to invite be invited to a program. You're just never going to, like, be in the position where Nucli is actually going to give you good results. And again, that can affect your standing with the platform as well, because you might get less invites if you're only producing duplicates versus uh, real vulnerabilities. If you do want to use one, I recommend Nucli, but I, I really don't use vulnerability scanners as part of my own practice, and I wouldn't recommend you do either. For IDORs, I think Authorize is probably the best tool. Um, so essentially what you do is you give it a cookie, and it will tell you whether or not the authorization is being enforced. So if you download Authorize, you can watch my video on it, or if you just go into configuration and where it says cookie, that's what you have replaced the attacker cookie with. Um, and then it will run when you go on your victim account and start, you know, doing various things like, you know, making a new post or replying to a post. You can see whether or not the authorization is being enforced. And it will say, like, enforced, bypassed, is enforced, question mark. Now, the one downside, really, of authorize is that multiple permission levels doesn't really work it's far more about testing you know two accounts plus not being logged in versus multiple permission levels um 
If you're working on a program which has cross user or cross organization boundaries, it's really, really good, especially for cross org stuff because cross org often will have um, a bonus associated with it as well. So really do recommend authorize. Um, you don't really need it for like smaller APIs, but for certainly large APIs, well worth downloading. Um, for lack of rate limiting, FFUF is the best for speed. If you need to test lack of rate limiting, you can do it. Burp Intruder has it in the pro version. Definitely has the best usability. Like FFUF, you have to fiddle with it a little bit. But I do think FFUF is probably worth it. Uh, Codingo's got this fantastic guide all about FFUF and how to master it. Um, IP Rotate, don't use it. Like, do, IP Rotate like produces so many false positives and NAs, um, you won't get a bounty for using IP Rotate. You're not bypassing the rate limiting. The rate limiting is in place. You just, like, how else are they gonna, gonna defend against rate limiting attacks? Like, don't use IP Rotate. Information disclosure. So, one of the great things I like to do for information disclosure type vulnerabilities is use Logger++, which is a free burp add-on, which allows you to search um, all your requests and grep via regex patterns, right? So grabbing those that meet certain uh, patterns. Now there is a website called regexlib, which is this searchable repository of a bunch of different patterns. So emails, postcodes, um, you know, addresses. It's very much, you know, you can look for zip codes in there. It's very much a really useful website to pick up some patterns for like commonly seen data. Emails um, are often what I go for, postcodes sometimes. Um, and then you can just paste these into Logger++ and then see if any data is returned. Now you can see here that if I have the account, you know, uh, hartman at gmail.com, if I'm seeing a bunch of other email addresses in my requests, that could mean that that is information disclosure. And I've talked far more about this um, on um, on like my video on GDPR and what counts as personal data. But you can see, you can you can have a look through that and find some really good regex patterns. Some kind of more specific tools here. SQL map is great for SQL injections. You've probably already heard of it. There's also NoSQL map for NoSQL injections. Um, Burp comes with a CSRF POC generator, which is really great for, for just demonstrating CR CSRF. Um, there are some other generators available. I've always had the most luck with Burps. Uh, JWT tool, which is basically this toolkit for working with JSON web tokens. If you ever see a string that starts with EYJ, capital J, uh, that's a JSON web token. And uh, the looking through this tool can be really helpful, both on like finding CVEs that might affect it, but primarily in kind of understanding the token itself. So I really do recommend that. And with that, that is the end of my video. Like you can see that actually I don't use that many automated tools when I test APIs. I primarily am looking to support what I already do, not necessarily reinvent the wheel. And that's what I'd recommend you do as well. Like, don't try to create a completely automated system. Not at the very start. Not when you're still new to bug hunting. Certainly that's something you end up doing, but definitely as you become a bit more experienced. Um, so I really do recommend starting out with these tools, learning them, and making them part of your practice, but not trying to create like a pipeline at the moment. However, if you are interested in creating a pipeline, I am currently working on a series of videos all about um, grep and bash and how to create like recon pipelines in, in bash, uh, just using the command line on Linux or OS X. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to IP Info for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to look into IP Info and see if it will help you, I have included a link to them in the description for you to come check out. So thank you very much for watching everyone and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.